Hello and welcome to episode 14 of the Squadcast, the official podcast of Glasgow Warriors. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. Hope you all enjoyed Saturday's win out in Perpignan. A very entertaining match, I think it's fairly safe to say. Uh, but bigger than that, almost, our big news for this week is Murphy is back. Yes, sir. How are you? Oh, no. I'm back. I'm good. Uh, very good. I don't know why. I'm in such a great mood, even though it's Monday. Love it. Probably because of our guest. I'm just I'm buzzing just to have him on. Yeah. Before before we get Teeing on to our up. guest, yep. Just tell the folks how how your your visit last week to your uh, your next specialist went. How is oh yeah, a next specialist. Um, yeah, it was informational. Informational. What's the, what's the word? <laughs> informative. Informative. That's the one. <laughs> it was informative. So yeah, there. Uh, Got a couple of issues with my neck being a scrummaging prop. I mean, it's bound to happen at some point. So, a bit of time off for it. I'm still training, but no contact. So it's uh, it's kind of a bit of a blessing because I stay away from contact and scrums for the next four to six weeks, and then hopefully by then, all my strength's back and uh, I'll be fit and firing again. Well, we're glad you're still here, and we're also glad that your your Tuesday vest is making a more regular appearance. By the looks of yeah, it. we're on a Monday now. On I don't Monday. know why. It's uh, I think it was one of the cleanest things in the cupboard compared to the other stuff still drying on the hanger. Stinks. Well, we sat here patiently long enough. Um, so since you're the one giving the big massive hype, do you want to introduce this week's guest? This week's guest, he's, a, he's probably the biggest star guest we've had on so far. <laughs> um, he was just back fresh from a win away. And it's our star winger slash scrum half, Jamie Doby. Welcome. Thank you, Murphy. Thank you, Craig. What a pleasure. How it's been a while. I've been wanting to do me on for a long time, but it's been a yeah. hard to time me down, eh? Yeah, it's been a chore so trying to get him on. <laughs> been a chore. Yeah, he's been he's been a bit reluctant. Reluctant. But oh, I just a busy man. He's he? finally here. Fair enough. Well, first things first. Thank you for not starting your stint like Duncan Weir did and saying that you've never listened to an episode of this, so you're on a good par already. Touch on Saturday. Obviously, starting out in Perpignan. Good win. Yeah, really good. No, it was uh, obviously good to be to be back playing and involved in the squad. Obviously, the don't be humble. Just say <laughs> it was, and the boys were <laughs> obviously we're on a, we're on a good run, so it was important to keep that going. And obviously, a few changes in the squad compared to the week before. So, um, and actually, it was actually one of the most enjoyable games I've been a part of yeah. in Glasgow. I, I loved it. I loved being back out there. Boys playing good rugby, scored some nice tries, and I think everyone was just having fun out there and came away with five points. So it was actually. Box kicks. Come on, box kicks. <laughs> yeah, now they're all right. Yeah, I thought Actually, so. I thought so. Thanks, Murph. Yeah, yeah no worries. Box kicks. I was, I, I was going to touch on the tries rather than the box kicks, but I feel we're going to jump on it. Um, you mentioned the, uh, the backs have scored some pretty nice tries out there. It, it must have been a really enjoyable performance to be to be a part of from yourself as a scrum half, obviously. Yeah, exactly. No, I think the, the style that we've sort of put in, especially in this sort of last couple of months that the boys have really bought into, I think it took a bit of time to get used to, but... It's a good style of rugby to be involved in, and as come half and that, it's high tempo. So just getting in and getting the ball away, and then just sort of being that link player. So I think it's um, I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving being a part of, of when I'm playing, and even in training, it's it's been good. So I feel very really definitely about to ask you about quote young boys and yourself. It still feels like you're like for, I remember when you came in just fresh out of school. It still feels like you're that from from our side of things. But obviously, two first starts out there. You and Ferry in the, the back row and then Nathan up at loose heads. How impressed were you for the, those guys going the, the full 80 minutes? Yeah, exactly. Full 80 minutes for them. Nate, obviously he's played, he's played, I don't know, how many games? A few games now. 12, but, I'll yeah. 12. Well, exactly. And this is his first start, but I thought that was awesome for him to go 80 minutes. But he's obviously put in big shifts over the last week and been really impressive. So it was good to sort of rotate that and have Nate um, step up. But I thought I thought it went really well. And obviously Fez again, um, sort of come in this season a bit of a breakthrough and played a few times off the bench and he's he's gone really well and again at the weekend I thought he was really good he's a skillful player um slots in nicely into the into the attack and rugby that we've got so I've been impressed with him and I thought it's good to see both of those boys sit, get a start and then play a good 80 minutes actually Fair enough. and there Murphy obviously this weekend home to Bath in front of the, the Warrior Nation obviously qualified for the last 16 already but how much are you looking forward to, to watching the boys go for yeah Fred and Night Lights yeah. can't beat it can you Jimmy no um, no, nah, it should be good. After the last game, I think boys realised we left quite a few points out there. So going back and looking, reviewing the game again today. So yeah, every game we want to win, regardless of the outcome, whether it's going to be a home quarterfinal or whatever, we don't care. It's just win every game and try to keep this train going of the streak. So yeah, that's our 
that's our plan anyway. Jamie will be looking forward to it, no doubt. Yep, no, absolutely. <laughs> Back at home Friday night. On the wing or... Who knows? <laughs> Ten? Who knows? Everywhere. Yeah. That crow. Prop. Nah, Could right. be using one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Could we need a use for one of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll move on swiftly before Jamie talks himself into something he can't get out of. <laughs> Anyway, a refresher for everybody that has listened to the Squadcast so far, an introduction to those that haven't in front of, well, I was going to say in front of us, Murphy's currently tossing it like he's tossing a stir fry or something at the minute, um, is our Squadcast hat. In that hat, there are a bunch of scenarios that you, Mr. Dolby, have to answer to the best of your ability and try oh, and make sure that people don't tune out. So, question one, dig in. Let's go. go. I need to go. What have we got? Who made the best and worst first impression? Nice. We've only had this one once, I think. Do you answer this? You answer, answer it, because I've we kind of I've kind of gone on over this already. We've done this already. Yeah. Um, that's a tricky one because I'm going to put my foot in it. I'm going to. Uh, a wee touch. I <laughs> think. <laughs> Go this year. This year, new boys. This year, new boys. This year. I'm trying to give Who's you a new? clue. <laughs> Who's new? Big Oops. nuns. JP. JP. Sinto. Um, Academy Boys, Tom, Andy Stewart. Tom, Anna Valla. Yeah, I wasn't here. I was away. But I've heard on the rumor <laughs> mill, this is for the worst first impression. Sorry, not the best. I knew, um, I knew this was where Murphy was driving <laughs> yeah. this already. Nah, the Tom, Anna Valla, prop in the academies, obviously come after things at Durham Uni, still doing that. Very impressive. But doesn't excuse the behavior on his first morning or one of the first it was three weeks for the, what three weeks he was doing it for three weeks he was doing it for apparently <laughs> this is what i've been told yeah. i was on the other side of the world and i still heard about it but <laughs> he was taking two bread rolls at breakfast which is inexcusable rolls. <laughs> which um yeah i think boys took note of after a while so he's now of course got the nickname two roll which is going to stick um, oh, damn. he's learned his lesson doesn't take one though. <laughs> we are going to have to get him on at some point, I think, too. Yeah, you'll have to, to defend guess. himself. I mean, to be fair, as a general rule, we haven't got the academy on yet, but hey, that might change in future. Yeah. Um, so that's the, the quote unquote worst first impression. Uh, best, you know who? Um, big nons, big Sione Vailano. I think he's obviously took a while to sort of get a game, um, but when he ha- when, once he has, <laughs> he's obviously showed what he can do. He's a great guy to be around. That's first start pretty. In yeah, exactly. First start, <laughs> what was that? Eight minutes into the game, ran about 60 mad. meters. Um, try, but yeah, I think he, he's a great guy to be in, nice and relaxed. I sit next to him in the changing room, actually, so we got on well. So I think he's been a good good addition to the squad, good on the pitch, good off the pitch. So. Any staff? No. Nah. Nah, All right, okay. No, nah, I don't know. Um, what, what sort of, just before, again, do you dig yourself into something? Uh, what sort of a, a sort of locker room? buddy is he is he a quite a relaxed guy in the changing room What's yeah the, very relaxed yeah. i don't know if it's i think it's part of the tiny part of the um, not particularly but <laughs> that's fine he keeps himself to his own sort of I, locker I, i'm nice to walt and it's yeah. the exact same so <laughs> nah he's he's not the tidiest but yeah he's very relaxed um so when yeah on the training pitch or when we're when we're chilling in the changing rooms or whatever it is he's he's a good buddy to to be next to he's got to be a pretty handy guy to be Close to on the pitch as well, given back row and scrum half. Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. We formed that relationship. He's a good, good guy, the protector. So yeah, he'll have your back. Yeah. It's like the Stormers game. Mm-hmm. Mind when he was cheering about getting that scrum penalty, and all of a sudden, <laughs> uh, that uh, I can't remember his name, Fury or whatever, the six wasn't happy. Oh with yeah, cheering exactly. About, I wouldn't wasn't happy with him cheering about the scrum penalty. Exactly. Last person I'd mess with. Probably. Yeah, it's the only last one. I would say seconded, but thirded on that yep. one. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Moving on, question two. Go on then. Okay, we've had this one before, but it'll be interesting from your point of view. Which teammate is the best dressing room DJ? Who was that the weekend? Sammy J. Good. Got some good tunes. Just, he actually, he normally does music in Bax Gym, which is nice because we're first up in the morning, so he Slow gets start. a good, yeah, a nice chill, depending. He reads the room, reads the room well. And got a good mix of a playlist depending on what the boys are feeling. Dressing room, post training. Walt, Walt likes to stick on tunes. He's again got a nice chilled. Loves a remix. Yeah, loves a remix. Yeah, he does. So um, one of those two's always good to have. 
he loves that um, Adele Tongan remix. I can't remember what one it is. I own the remix. Brilliant. I'm going to need to go and look this up because I never thought Adele and Tongan remix Honestly, would be mixed together. Neither did I. But very good. Yeah? Right. Very good. Fair enough. So you, you both more of us are chilled chilled vibes when it comes to change room or gym. Do you enjoy getting psyched up at any point? Mm, not personally, no. Unless, um, I, I, <laughs> you'll probably laugh at this, but like a song I like to listen to before a game is a bit of S Club 7. Oh, no, that one. Start, <laughs> uh, no, that mm, one. Mm, I love yeah. it. It's just, nah, it doesn't get me hyped or anything. It's just a good song. Yeah, I'm more sort of... Oh, no, I think when I'm in the changing room just before a game, I think we need some music to get you going. I think that's actually a big part of it. But I, in the build-up to a game on the way to a stadium, that for a way, I'm more sort of chill tunes. And then sort of that last bit before you're out for warm-up or before you're out for the game. And then gym, unless you're doing a big session, I'm more chilled. Wow, I'm getting yeah, some. Exactly. Back gym is nice and, nice and chilled, actually. I don't know what the forwards gym's like, but... Very similar. Good. But it's usually Zander that's on, but... Oh, God. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And he's back. He's slugging off the figures once again. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Whoops. All right. Moving swiftly on. Which teammate has the best hidden talent? Now, this will be interesting. Are you able to answer this? Because we've had this a couple of times, and nobody has been able to think of a hidden talent. Do you have a hidden talent, Jamie Doby? Mm. If I told you, it wouldn't be hidden, would it? Do you have a talent, <laughs> Jamie Doby? <laughs> uh, I wish... Um, who's got a good You play the talent? bagpipes, don't you? Uh, no. Uh, well, I you do, have yeah? done, no. Yeah. I think I probably could, but I wouldn't be any good right now. I used to play them at school, and it's actually something this year I'm going to try to get back into. Yeah. Just like be able to play a couple basic tunes. Island Cathedral. Something like that, better, exactly. Yeah. You said about the bagpipes, obviously, Burns Night coming up. Is it? Do you have a particular tune that you're able to get into? I'm more thinking just if you're not playing this weekend, or even if you are playing this weekend, Get yourself on the pitch, half time, Burns Night theme for the bath game. Oh, get your I tickets don't know now. About that, Greg. <laughs> nah, I've actually, I was, throughout the year, I will get back into it, but this weekend might be a stretch. Something like, we'll get Highland Cathedral, you've already said. What else gets? Let's Florida get Scotland, full enough. Yeah, I suppose. I'm trying to think. I'm not a bagpiper. Um, My brother plays bagpipes. Amazing bag Grace. It's a good tune, but it's been, a, well, it's been since I moved to Glasgow, I've not actually played them. Oh, so it's great. been a good few years now. But in the flat? Yeah. I nearly got them out in New Year. I oh, thought yeah, I'd back did. myself. Yeah. And then I like got the music out and I couldn't read it. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> this is not happening. Oh, yeah. Anybody else apart from yourself? I know we, we, we're more than happy to take you for the answer for this one, but anybody else that... We I've can... not nominated myself for that, by the way. Oh, no, I think uh, Murphy has. <laughs> um, I think Murphy's put you down for that one. Anyone else got hidden talent? It's mainly just musical instruments. Which nah, is there must dull, be something. Um, I don't know. Nah, probably not. I can't even think of anybody. No, I'm struggling. Does Pump or any of the staff that you know have any good hidden talents? Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. This isn't necessarily a hidden talent. <laughs> but um, well, why do did I you know, <laughs> Craig, head of media at Glasgow Warriors, was once... Oh, but I, li I like the fact you'd give me a promotion. I'm really <laughs> not a head of media. <laughs> was once uh, voted the sexiest voice in the whole of Sterling. By who? Not not entirely true, but <laughs> that is I true. That's what I've been told. On, then I, I did once win an award for the University of Stirling radio stations. Ah, sexiest voice. voice. Who would have thought? For for clarity, Me? That, I would have thought. <laughs> you can come back again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for for clarity, that was voted on. Probably in a Boaty McBoatface type of poll, <laughs> where it was who would pick him in this time. Well, but, that's yeah. Craig's hidden talent. He's got a brilliant that's voice. It. Apparently, that's my talent now. I'm just going to run with that and own it. Shout out to your three radio. So you're choosing Craig for your best hidden talent? Craig, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, yeah. next time. Closest friend in the squad. Who's your closest friend in the squad? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> we have got a great group of mates. No, we actually do. There's a great group of... Um, I still consider us young guys in the squad. Um, it likes, I've obviously yeah. lived with Gregor Brown for... Mm -hmm. Coming up four years now. Gregor both Brown. Been, both been in Glasgow four years now, which is almost, which is ridiculous. But yeah, so we've lived together from when we moved down. He obviously moved down from Aberdeen. I was moving across from Edinburgh from school and obviously home to Inverness. So we sort of linked up, played 18s together and then have moved in. And we were obviously really close from that. 
but the likes of Murphy. Yeah. Thanks, there you Shane. go. Um, Ollie. Let me see if you remember them all. Keep going. Gas. <laughs> Rory Darge. Rory Darge. Um, what makes a group so tight? Uh, I think we've all, well, a lot of us have played age group stuff together. Um, 20s, like, obviously, some of you old, you're an older boy. Old boy. You're an old boy. <laughs> um, played, like, 20s World Cups and that together, so obviously knew each other from before we were in Glasgow. And then we're all just sort of similar people, I yeah. think. So, yeah, get on well. We do a lot of stuff away from... Golfing. Yeah, which hasn't we actually haven't done enough of this year. Um, well, dependent. Been, yeah, obviously that's been a factor. And then I was in summer, which is. I was meant to say we could have a new member, Jack Man. Jack Man. Jack Man. Welcome him to the golf. Young yeah, team. he's in the he's in the golf sphere. He loves it. So we've not really touched on Jack. Obviously, came in, made his debut against Bath. Mm. Took the the head injury in that game, which yeah. obviously you don't rush four calls back. But I mean, how how good was he in that game? I don't know he was a standout by far, especially on debut and starting. Um, professional David it was, it was pretty nuts. Um, played very well. I reckon he would have played several more games since, yeah. but unfortunately, obviously, because of the head knock and the protocol around that, he's had to take some time out, which is obviously the smartest thing to do, considering it's a long career and he's only 23. So, yeah. um, no, Jack's great. Played a lot at 20s with Jack, um, and he was in the academy, so we did a lot of academy stuff with Jack as well, and then. Um, played a lot of Super 6 against him and then it's obviously great to have him across here and he's just freshly moved in with Ollie Smith. Oh, has he? Yeah, there so they've got the flat um, and yeah, he says he's loving life now. He's not travelling through for about an hour and a half every single day. <laughs> so he's it's a little bit easier, just a 10 minute commute. So no, it's great to have Jack around. He's a very good friend and I'm sure he'll be well welcomed into our group. Of course, yeah. No, yeah. exactly. He's, he's obviously settled in really well. And then he'd say was, he was actually so good that game against Bath that yep. it's just a shame, obviously, with the, the head knock. But he'll, yeah. he'll, he'll be playing plenty of games, I'm sure, yep. once he's back fit. But, um, nah, good lad as well. Good man. Moving on. Try to find a fresh one. I've not seen this one before with the lined paper. Oh, I was going to say, there's a couple with lined paper that have been in there. If you had to pick one teammate to be humanity's ambassador to aliens, who are you picking? <laughs> Goes to a shout out to our, the, now, the now dealer departed Duncan Seller, who that is his uh, that was his parting gift to this was podcast. It? Oh. That one question. There we Thanks, go. Thanks, Duncan. Um. As in the best, <laughs> who would give the best impression of the human? Take, take it whatever Just way you want. The you ambassador can, of you, humanity. You can you can with Sebastian Cancellari. Really? I, I just for entertainment factor, I picked George Turner. I just think it'd be hilarious. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> it'd just be hilarious. Um, yeah. yeah. Why Seba? This is because he's one of the best blokes out there. I think so. He would give a good. Ah. Uh, yeah. What is he not a best? Bloke? Is he not? No, he, best is, he is. He is. You did pause at exactly yeah. the wrong point. Might, in that might, they might give the aliens a false sense of hope, though. Yeah. yeah true. Yeah. Well, there's quite a few good candidates if you're oh, wanting yeah. some entertainment. <laughs> um. So we, we know why Seba. What George? Go on. What's your What's your I reason just, there? Uh, George is funny when he's in. If you get George in a good mood, he's just hilarious. Just what he says and does. It's hard to describe. You've got to know George and be around George to realise what he's like. He's just a bit mental, but it's funny. Um, the other one I was thinking was Demo. Imagine Demo meeting aliens and that. They're like... I actually don't want to imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Demo or Sione. Try to go, oh, hi, this is the world. <laughs> aliens would be shocked. Oh. Especially Demo. Either of you fancy it? You know, if there's a, I don't know, a remake of Close Encounters or something, would you be the, the person for first contact? No, but I, I hate to say it again, but I think another strong candidate would be Ross. Yeah. He's just, just Ross. Ross would be a safe pair of hands, I think. Yeah, he would. He'd yeah. just, you know, he's cool, calm, and collected, so he'd show them around and tell them what to do. Oh, would you fancy it? No, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be able to watch the nice, carnage yeah. unfold. <laughs> All right. One more? One more. Yeah. One more. Favourite non-playing member of Glasgow Warriors. <laughs> Tough, you know. Um, this is where you find out a lot about where he was. Does, does he pick the coaches? Does he try and go <laughs> for that? Uh, no, you know what I'm going to say. Stuart Dow. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Probably I a common... 
answer to this, I reckon. He is a funny bloke. Stuart Dye, what does he... What's does his he give role? you... What's his role? He's a player development. Player development. Headed player officer development. Officer manager. Looks after the boys' interests away from rugby. <laughs> checks in on the boys, that stuff. Dodge has ripped him a new one. Dodge made him pick him up at half six from the flat and drive him to Sterling for Dodge's driving lesson then test. Well, that sums it up. <laughs> it's a good joke right there. I was it? like, what in player development manager does that, like where does that cover and then instead of just shooting back home afterwards because it was an hour lesson and then obviously an hour-ish test Stu waited in Sterling and then took him home again free of charge says it all but yeah he's obviously he's actually been on a few of the away trips this year always good yeah. value spent plenty of years in the police got some good experiences and he's always just a good bloke to did you know he, he drove the queen I did know that, yeah. and that's actually quite cool. So when the Queen came up, yeah, he would uh, he'd be in the, one of the league cars or taking her in the fancy, you know, the big fancy yeah. whatever they have, Common Bentleys point. or yeah, and but in her actual car. Yeah. See, that's not so much a hidden talent, but that, like, that's a it's claim to fame story. Yeah, yeah, claim to fame. So yeah. he'd be driving her from like Balmoral to wherever. And he said he, well, he claims his best pals are Princess Anne because she's uh, obviously the patron of uh, Scottish rugby. So wherever. Uh, she comes up, obviously. Stu does a lot of driving and stuff because it's history, and then uh, <laughs> apparently they've grown a great relationship. So I like the fact that you've thrown apparently in there three yeah, times. Yeah, because I don't know if I believe it. <laughs> I was tempted to ask her when I met her at that Argentina game, or the, sorry, the Fiji game. I was tempted to ask, do you know who Stu Dow was? Because she, she'd say, <laughs> As you're going down the anthems. Yeah, she'd be like, not a clue. Because <laughs> there's no way. Does he tell you his dad jokes as well? No. Doesn't matter. So. Got me. He got a good one the other day. I was gonna say just before we started recording, you were on a you were on a yeah. bad joke. Like, so here because we go. Let's go. It was inspired by Stu. The floor the floor is yours. He goes. <laughs> Guess who I bumped into yesterday? Um, going to get my glasses fixed at the optician. I don't know. Everyone. Happy <laughs> 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 you laughed at that. And that's alright. <laughs> Oh, that, I mean, that is probably <laughs> as good a note as any to end on, given we're just about at the end of end of time, as it were. Not quite the end of time, but the end of this particular podcast episode. What a shame. Jamie Dobby, thank you very much for your time and for your efforts in answering those questions. And all the best with whenever the next time you're on the pitch is. Hopefully this Friday. We'll see. Yep, thank you very much, Craig. Yeah. Mar- Murphy, me on. great thanks, to have you Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Craig. And we will see you next week. You will. Good. I mean, you weren't getting a choice in that. We are seeing you next week. This is yeah. you're, you're you're never leaving that. Any recommendations from the fans of who we want? Just punt drop, them in. Drop us a comment. Drop us your questions, suggestions as well if you've got any. In the meantime, he's been Jamie Doby. He's been Murphy Walker. I've been Craig Wright, and this has been the Glasgow Warriors Squadcast. Mm-hmm.